Ninja freaking Nika. Oh my gosh, I love this ride. Edge Nika at Fuji Q Highland is only one of three in the world. Most of you are probably familiar with X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. The third one is Dinaconda in China, but between the three, this one is widely considered the best, and I can understand why. This coaster is insane. It was my most anticipated ride that I was gonna ride in Japan. It didn't end up being my favorite, that belongs to Hakuge. However, this was my second favorite coaster I rode, and for a good reason. This ride is nuts. This is going to be my full in-depth review of it so that you can know what to expect if you go to ride it. I'm going to guess that a lot of the people watching this video are at least familiar with X2. So you understand the concept of a 4D coaster and how this ride works. It uses the same mechanisms, even though this is s and and that was Arrow. The basic design is the same, and the layout even has a lot of similarities. It's just a lot of technical things that are going to be some of your differences. Like for instance, this is a shorter train, there's only 5 rows. The train is also a lot sleeker looking, it just looks better, you know? But in terms of restraint design, it's almost the same. One of the differences though is this ride does have a few different seat belts, so you have a normal waist seat belt, and then you have the seat belt connecting the two different parts of the harness that go over your arms so those connect together and then there's a third one that connects from one of the harnesses down to the bottom of the seat so that's one of the reasons why this ride has slower dispatches is they have to deal with a lot of that but in terms of how the seat feels it's just about the same but one of the other notable differences between this and x2 is I thought that this ride was a lot smoother Grant, this ride did open after X2, so it is newer in that regard, but the things that I really noticed was that this ride fixed every major problem I had with X2, because X2 is really one of those coasters that you either love it or hate it. When I first rode it, I was not a big fan. It wasn't even one of my favorite rides in the park. I didn't even want to ride it again. Now, it's my favorite coaster at Magic Mountain, and I can't get enough of it. So, I was very excited going into this, and I seriously think that this ride fixed every little little minor issue that X2 had and so I consider this a perfect roller coaster so like for the sake of this video you already know it's gonna get a 10 at the final score but I mean let's get into some specifics because I want to tell you why I love this coaster so much the first thing being its sheer intensity and that's something that X2 shares as well but I mean look at the stats for this thing it's about 250 feet tall max speed almost 80 miles per hour so this thing is fast and it is huge this ride is absolutely monstrous monstrous. It dominates Fuji Q's skyline. This and Fujiyama are your two most prominent coasters when you're rolling up to the park. Those are the rides you see. So I love its intensity and I love the layout. Now you're probably looking at this and you're like, okay, it looks the exact same as X2's. Not quite. There's one main difference between this and X2's and the difference is actually my personal favorite part of the ride, and that is that this coaster has a zero G roll. After that inside Raven turn, this ride flips you upside down, but what is so brilliant about this element is that the seats are rotating while you're flipping. So the parts where you'd normally be upside down, you're not just upside down, you're flipping, so you might be sideways, you could be backwards, and it is so chaotic. You don't know which way is up and which way is down. That was the one element that made this ride for me. I mean, it's all good. Every part of this ride is brilliant. But that single element, I lost my mind. I could not stop laughing. I have never laughed harder on any roller coaster ever than Ed Janica. If you ask the people that I rode this coaster with, they will tell you I was laughing my head off. And guess what? They were too. Our first time, we could not get enough of it. I got off this coaster and I said, I need to get back on this thing right now. Oh my gosh! This ride is incredible! Holy freak! That's the best coaster in Japan. There's very few rides that do that for me. I was completely floored. In total, I got on Edge and Ica four times, and I wish I got on it more, but as you can imagine, it did have quite a line, so actually, every single time I waited for Edge and Ica, I did the single rider line, which is the same line as the fast pass line. The difference is, they just wait for there to be a single rider, but sometimes, that line ends up being longer than it would be waiting for the regular line, and so really, it's a hit or miss. You might get on immediately or you might end up waiting a really long time for there to be single rider. And also you don't get to choose your seat. So unfortunately, 
I never did the very last row. I got put in rows one through four on either side. So those were my four rides. I got two on one side, two on the other, and each time I got put in a different row, but never the very back. Well, actually, I sort of did. I, at one point, I did get put in the very back, but some GP took my spot because they didn't understand what row they were supposed to be in, so then that booted me and put me in a different row, which I was salty about, but you know, I also don't speak Japanese. I wasn't about to start arguing with them. So you just suck it up, you deal with it, but my personal favorite ride I got on it was in that fourth row. So I imagined that the very best seat for this would be in that last row, but again, I didn't really have that opportunity to experience it. I thought the front was great, but the back, that drop is even more nuts. You feel that speed and intensity. The forces are just so much more powerful. And the same goes for X2. But I definitely recommend riding this in as many different rows as you can. I personally also prefer the inside seat. I'm the same way with X2. I thought that the outside seat was a, just a little too much because you get some of that head rocking back and forth. And when the ride is so intense, that can kind of give you a headache. Like the ride almost physically drains you. And that's the kind of thing that I enjoy. I love those fast paced, aggressive rides. And this is 100% one of those. So this might be a ride that is not your cup of tea. And that is totally fine. Not everyone is going to love this coaster. In our group of seven that went to this park, we were split between Team Edgenica as their favorite right there and Team Dota Dampa. Some people in our group much prefer Dota Dampa, and that is totally fine. I personally was by far Team Edgenica. One other main difference that I want to bring up when comparing this to X2 is how you actually end out the ride. On X2, you are completely level as you hit the brake run. On Edgenica, you are not. You hit the brake run facing the ground because you rotate through it. Because of the way you flip, when you come to that final stop, you are staring at the ground. We almost always hit the brake run facing forwards, completely level with the track. This one, you hit the brake run facing backwards, staring at the ground. And that is a very different sensation. And that really was the moment where I just kind of sat there in my seat and I was, again, laughing, but thinking to myself, I can't believe that this ride exists. Like, how is this actually a thing? How do they get this ride approved? And how is it this good? One person on our group, Dan from Midway Mayhem, went as far to say that this was his favorite roller coaster he'd ever ridden. And you know what? I 100% understand why. That personally is not the case for me, it is not my number one. However, I do rank this ride very highly. It is just so so much fun. If a ride can get me to laugh uncontrollably, you know it's really good. Because I can safely say that no other ride has done that for me. Not even X2. One final thing I want to talk about before I give this coaster a 10 is I want to discuss the ritual of going and actually boarding this coaster. So, you do have to ride this coaster without shoes on. You take off your shoes, you put it in this little locker inside the station as you're with your boarding group and then the key goes around your wrist on this little bracelet that you just slip on. And that's not gonna come off, you're gonna be just fine riding with that. Again, they assign your seats, you take your seat, and first you do your seat belts, and then they adjust your shoulder harnesses. So they kinda adjust your restraints in two different steps. That's kinda why it takes a while. And then, once they're ready to dispatch, you hear the spiel, there's a big horn, and the ride ops start clapping and chanting. And it is wonderful. And it is so catchy. I love it. Here's a little clip I took. You can see what happens. So as you saw there, they start clapping going, Edgenica, Edgenica, Edgenica. And what is so wonderful about this is they get everyone on the train to do the same. So everyone is clapping in unison chanting Edgenica, Edgenica, Edgenica. Like how cool is that? I actually loved it because everyone was just so happy to ride it. The ride ops had so much enthusiasm and just gets you pumped up because yeah, you're about to ride Edgenica. And just like that, you dispatch backwards out of the station and as you're rolling up to the lift hill, as you go around that little turn, it flips you on your back. So before you even go up the lift hill, you are on your back staring up at the sky. And again, that's where you climb up that monstrous lift hill, 250 whatever feet in the air. The ride just keeps on climbing. You have the most amazing view. Oh, and let me also add, I rode this ride in the rain. That was an experience. Because they will run this coaster in the light rain as long as it's not like a downpour. And that was something else. 
So in conclusion, this ride is amazing. It made the visit to Fuji Q by itself worth it. And then you have the other amazing coasters in the park that all together is just like, this park is unbelievable. But for me, this was the star attraction. So for its final score, I'm going to give it a 10. It's perfect. What can I say? I adore this ride, and it makes me sad that it is all the way in Japan because it means that I won't be riding it for quite some time. I really wish I lived closer to it, but I guess in the meantime, X2 will have to do. But that concludes my review of Ejinaika at Fuji Q Highland. Let me know if you're one of those people that's had the opportunity to experience this coaster, if you agree with my thoughts, and if not, if this coaster is on your bucket list of rides that you really want to do one day. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I have reviews of roller coasters all around the world, and there's still a lot more coming. So please. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys next time.